Hey Retro fans, welcome to another episode of Retro Gaming Memories. In this episode we are going to look at something that I bought just the other day there, which is the Mega Everdrive X3. Um, now this is a flash cart for the Sega Mega Drive. Um, this is a European edition, obviously, because it's a PAL Mega Drive that I have. Um, and this basically... Uh, there's three different versions of this, I think. There's a the Mega Drive X3, the X5 and the X7. Um, this is the kind of budget version. Um, the X5 and the X7 have various... The X7 is a sort of flagship model and it's like £129, I think. Um, and it has all sorts of fancy things that I don't need. Um, so basically, we, this, this does everything I need, basically. Um, I got this from Retro Towers in the UK. Um, I'll put a link to their website down below in the description. Um, really, really impressed with their service. I ordered this like 11 o'clock on a Sunday night. It was a kind of, I fancy one of these, let's get it. And uh, yeah, and I got a, a, an email confirmation on the Monday morning that it had been kind of set to ordered and dispatched and all that kind of stuff. And Tuesday morning it arrived. It's like next day delivery for free, free delivery as well. So big shout out to Retro Towers. They're not paying me to say this. This is a personal purchase. Um, but I was just really impressed by their service. I expected it to take, you know, two to three days and get it by the end of the week sort of thing. But next day delivery, I mean, you can't complain. That's that's like Amazon level of delivery service. So, um, yeah, so when you buy the car, you can buy kind of the, the X7, I think, comes in, in a box, clamshell box and all that kind of stuff. So you just get the cart. Um, it does come, um, I think, did I pay extra for this? I can't remember. But it does come with a, probably not be able to see that, an 8 gigabyte SD, micro SD card. And there's a slot in the top. Let's see if we can see that. I don't know if that'll focus, but there's a slot there. And uh, you just pop the, the SD card in there and away you go. So basically, I thought we would take a little look at this. So, oh. If I can get it in, good God. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so there's a little bit of setup you need to do. When you put it in without anything on it, you know, just factory defaults, it tells you where you need to go and what you need to do. So, <coughs> I've set this up already. Um, I will put a couple of notes in the description of where to go. You download basically a, a zip file, an operating system of sorts for the Mega Everdrive. Um, you unzip it and it gives you a folder called Mega um, with two or three files in it, I can't quite remember. But basically, you unzip the, the OS file that you get, the folder that it creates, Mega, you just copy that onto the SD card and that is the operating system. From there, it's good to go. You can put files straight onto the, root of the, the SD card. You can create folders for various things, which is what I've done. Um, so it's basically, it then just treats it as a, <clears throat> as a drive and it will pick up uh, whatever you like. Now the good thing is, is this also has essentially the the master system power base converter thingy me bob built into it. So this will play master system games as well. Um, it will do save states as well, so you can save your game I think. Um, that's not really a function that I'm too bothered about to be honest. The ability to play mega, uh, master system games is nice, um, but the real reason I actually bought this is because you can put BIOS for Sega CD or Mega CD. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but basically under there I've got the, you can't see it at all. Under there I've got the Sega Mega CD unit. Um, I don't know if it ever got, in fact, let's have a little look. There you go, so there she is. Um, yeah, so it's obviously a PAL Mega CD many things lying on this desk um, which won't play American discs or Japanese discs obviously um, but you can download the BIOS files for the Japanese and mm, American Sega CD uh, devices put them on here and you can then sort of fool or reload the BIOS into the Sega CD which kind of fools it into thinking it's a, a multi-region device so essentially you can play US and Japanese discs without modifying your console. The only thing I have found is I've got a 
a 50 60 hertz re uh, mod on the back of this that I did myself um, it's a video modification it's not the region modification um, there's two separate mods you can do to this it's just the video mod um, but I have found that if you try and boot up the Sega CD the American one when it's in 50 hertz mode it does give you a, a kind of an error saying this is this is for NTSC compatible devices only so you have to flick it so I don't know how successful you'd be if you don't have the the video mod so again it's just the 50 60 hertz video mod I have on this I don't have the region mod which lets you obviously then play Japanese carts and all that kind of stuff so that all being said um, what I'll do is I'll put some I'll put a little a little section in here at this point showing you the folder structure of the drive that's set up on my uh, the the card um, so have a little look at those screenshots that will show you how to set up the card and then when you bring it back stick it in your mega drive then we'll have a look at what it does okay so go to crix.com as shown on screen find the mega everdrive card that you have when you scroll down to the bottom of it there's an os update file click on that and you'll see this type of screen. Uh, download the latest version, in this case version 3.06. Uh, unzip it and it will create a mega folder as you see here. Copy that over onto your cart. Um, and I've made some folders, Master System, Mega CD and Mega Drive. Uh, as you can see, uh, just copy your games. You can have subfolders in there if you want. But copy your games in there. And uh, lastly what I've done is in the Mega CD I've just put in the BIOS files. Um, directly in there and you can then access them uh, from the menu okay so hopefully that helps you see how you set the the, the SD card up <clears throat> so what happens when you stick this in so I, I've got a region switch at the back I have a video switch sorry at the back so I'm set to 50 Hertz ie PAL mode at the moment so when you switch on you get the little boot screen thing and then here you go so the, you'll see from the screenshots that I've that put in, I created three folders, Master System, Mega CD and Mega Drive. Now, the Mega folder, the, the kind of operating system folder is still there. Um, it's just hidden, which is quite nice. So you've got a few different options. Um, C, the C button brings up this uh, menu here. Now A selects and B basically skips out. So if you press B, it just skips out. And C brings it back up. You can use up and down um, to, to pick whatever option you want. So if you go into options, press A. So you can see game region is world. You can change that. It does it by default itself, so you don't actually need to touch this. Mega key, I've no idea what that is actually. I did read about it, but I can't remember what the hell it is. I'm sure that's something to do with the... Is it Sega Master System? Can't remember. Anyway, I've just left that to on. Cheats have switched off because I don't want to cheat in any of the games yet. I might at one point. Sort files is set to on, um, which will, I believe, set them in alphabetical order. Otherwise, it just sets them in whatever order you've got them on uh, on the thing. So, hide system directory is the guy. Um, if we go down to that and switch it off and come out of the menu by pressing C, and again, you'll see that the mega um, folder has come up. So that's the operating system folder, um, which I don't want to do anything with. Uh, so how the hell do you... You press B to go back, basically. Um, so press C again, go to options, and I want to hide that. So hide system directory, you just press A, and it will change it to on. Press C to come out of that, and there we go, it's hidden. So that's lovely. Um, so if you press A, press A will go into a directory, press B will go back. Um, so if you go into Master System, so I've got Bruce Lee which is a homebrew uh, Master System game. This supports, um, so I've only tried SMS, I did try the SG which is SG1000 format, um, but it doesn't work, it will play the audio but you don't get any video, bizarrely. So, um, yeah, so Bruce Lee SMS, if you want to play the game, you just press A. You get this little file menu option thing. Um, so you can select and start. You can just play the music from these games as well, which I presume is what happens when you do select only. Um, 
I'm not interested in any of these funky little things, I just want to play the game. So you press A to select and start. And there we go, there's uh, there's Bruce Lee and all its pal glory. Now cunningly this is a multi-region ROM, so if I flick this to 60 Hz mode, it'll go sort of full screen, speed up slightly. Um, so I'm pressing start because I'm on a Mega Drive control pad. The Master System doesn't have a start button, it's only got A and B, so C, usefully, is your start button. So it's only A and B that you use. So, but here we go, there's Bruce Lee on the, oh, that was good, on the Sega Master System. So it's a, it's a port of the, um, the, the old 8-bit Bruce Lee. It's, it's cracking, it's not, um, it's not Bruce Lee 2, which was a kind of another homebrew thing that was done. But it's uh, it's quite a nice little update. It plays a little bit smoother than the original 8-bit games, as you would expect. Um, but it's it's good fun, and you have um, a power bar and all that kind of stuff, so you can take a few hits before you actually can get into a bit of scrap before you. Yeah, I'm doing terrible at this, aren't I? Anyway, it's not it's not a review. Um, if you press reset, it will reboot into the uh, the menu coming back to where you left off. Um, there is a there is an option, and I've, I've, I'll need to read up how to set it. Again, it's not something I'm really interested in, but I, th I believe that if you press reset, it will save your game state. Now there is save folders in that mega, uh, sorry, operating system folder. Um, at the moment it's it's empty, but I think it's an option you can set on to, to sort of save your game when you press reset. You do have to sort of switch the console off or reset it to save your game. There's no in-game menu with this Mega EverDrive cart. I believe the X5 and above, the X5 and X7, you can sort of pause the game and there's a little menu pops up where you can save your game. Um, but again, it's not really something that I'm, I'm interested in. It's, it's not for me. So um, if that's something that you would like, I would maybe investigate the other uh, the other devices that are available. So, anyway, the Mega Drive, if we press A again, so I've got Sega Laga, or Sega, what the hell is that called? Sega. It's basically a homebrew Mega Drive. Um, obviously, if you have the means, you can put other ROMs on this, but for legal reasons, I'm just showing you homebrew, which are open source. Um, yeah. So, this supports uh, SMD format, Sega Mega Drive, or bin, .bin format games, um, possibly others, but those are the, the kind of main ones that you, you get. Um, so again, just there's only one file, so it's highlighted in white. Press A to start. There we go. So this is the uh, mass screen set up slightly weird, actually. If I, so you can see my video mode there, that's 50 hertz, where it kind of shrinks the screen a little bit. 60 hertz puts it full screen. So uh, this is, I was always, oh god, I was always terrible at Galaga, um, I always preferred Galaxian, but you know, that's just me, so, oh Jesus. So this is, this is a nice little homebrew version of Galaga. Anyway, I'm not going to sit and play that, it's just to show you that it works. <laughs> um, the thing that I did like is the Mega CD. So this is the reason that I bought it, right? So if I, uh, let's just take the cart out altogether and put this up, oops, put it in the right region, which also helps. So I'm in 50 Hertz mode at the moment, so pal. And there we go. So this is the stock Mega CD, <clears throat> all very good. It's the, the normal Sega Mega CD logo. That is my device with nothing else in it. So if I, put this in and start it up. Put Mega CD and I've got the European Mega CD. Um, I don't know why I actually copied them because it makes no difference. I meant to put the Japanese ones on, but hey. Um, and I've got the US Sega CD. So there's revision one, revision two. Basically they play different tunes and do different kind of boot up things if you start them. So if we go to US Sega CD, one and select and start it will give you an error it's saying it's an ntsc compatible sega cd right which is fine so if i flick this over that's me in 60 hertz mode i.e uh, ntsc and then you press reset it will boot up 
So nothing's changed, my Mega C is still the same unit. But this is Sega, you'll see it says Sega CD, which is the, the US name for the Mega CD. So there we go, and uh, you can then play... Thank you very much. Yeah, anyway, we'll turn that off because that's making a lot of noise. You can then uh, just stick your US games in. Now, I don't actually have any US games to hand, so... Um, but you get US exclusive games and there's, they tend to be cheaper um, than the, the UK equivalents. So um, it's a nice way to be able to get uh, multi-region games and there's again it will support Japanese games if you get the, the Japanese BIOS files. So yeah, it's, uh, it's cracking. I really like it. It's a nice little device. Uh, it wasn't too expensive. I think it's about £46 I think I paid for it. Um, so it's great and like I say I've got an 8 gigabyte card in there which will support pretty much everything you ever wanted ever. Um, you can, I don't know what the maximum card size is, um, I don't intend to test it because essentially I'm just using that as a multi-region CD booty bios -y thing. Um, you know I have a many many Sega Mega Drive games. Um, pretty much all the ones I want, so I'm not really that interested in, in getting ROMs and things for, for other games. Um, I might use it to sort of try out games that I'm considering buying, especially if they're kind of more expensive games, you know, check that, I'm, that I would actually play them rather than just having them for sort of rarity value. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a great little device. Um, I would thoroughly recommend it. Like I say, Retro Towers, the actual US uh, seller is Crix.com. Um, I'll put a link to that in the, the show notes, the description below as well. Um, it is, these are actually manufactured by Crix. Um, that guy there. So it's them, or that guy, I'm not sure if it's a guy or, or a company, but it's, it's those chaps that, that make the actual device. Um, Retro Towers in the UK is just a kind of UK reseller for them, official stockist. But like I say, Retro Towers, fantastic service, really, really pleased with their service um, and thoroughly recommend it. So there you go. I hope you found this useful. Um, if you fancy it, then, you know, crack in, uh, tell Retro Towers I sent you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope it's been been useful and fun to see see what this thing does, and I would thoroughly recommend getting one if you, especially if you have a Mega CD uh, device. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, thanks for watching as ever, and uh, hello to my new subscribers as well. I've got a few new subscribers that I've kind of followed up. So hello to you guys, and thank you for subscribing. Um, thanks to all my existing subscribers as well. That goes without saying. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching and uh, like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, shout for the rooftops, all that kind of good stuff and I shall see you next time.